Okay. Hello, welcome in any and everybody. This is Lynn and Otter back to do another episode of One Last Night. Last we left off, we just got away from the silence. We're very lucky, and we're gonna take a little break in this abandoned building. Hmm. Let's get right into it. A fair amount of ground had been covered, so I was feeling a little better about stopping here, though the anxiety was ever present. The sun was nearly out of sight now, and what little rays remained would be useful in setting up the tent and fire. Hmm. Where should we camp then? I don't feel comfortable doing it in the open or in any of these rickety houses. Really? I feel like the, feel like the obvious choice is in the houses. The bat had a point, but I was accustomed to the feeling. We can check the backyards. There should be one with a mostly intact fence. Xavier nodded and started off towards the nearest house without another word. Things had been quiet since we left, our focus on fleeing rather than conversation, yet I couldn't help but feel there was some other tension residing there. He seemed almost distant now, and I wasn't entirely sure why. The most likely reason was everything from the past few days was finally taking its toll. After a few tries, we, find, we managed to find a suitable one and settle down, night now in the full effect that just as we finished. As we sat down around the flames, I pulled the faded guide from my backpack and handed it, handed it over to the bat. Here, you asked, yesterday, you asked for this yesterday and after earlier. It's probably useful to give, you this, give this a read now. Thanks, Dorian. He took the journal and stared at it for a few moments, fingers tracing the edges like he was lost in thought. He shook himself out of it and began, began flipping through the pages as I started the fire, the heat providing some sliver of comfort. I'd hoped it would start up a conversation, but the bat read silently in the firelight. My thoughts began to drift back as the lack of, taking, as the lack of talking left me with nothing to do but think. We'd passed so many buildings today, walking along streets that I'd been on a year prior. The scenery was full of echoes of the past, and it was as if they came crawling to life as the memories flooded my brain. Countless days wandering as I craved a way to escape my busy life as a youth. Step after step, trying to kill time while I waited, while I waited for the love of my life to come home from work. Strolling up right alongside him, drawing from the endless well of comfort that came with being brown around him and wondering how I'd gotten so lucky to find him. It's a fickle thing, trying to find that sense of belonging each of us yearn for so desperately. You have it sometimes and you feel relaxed. Until it's gone and you're left reflecting on it all. Each street post and lawn ornament may have been something to glance, pa to glance past once, but each held significance to what would now be considered my old life. They reminded me of the past I wish, I could, I wish could be my present and future, the emotional, ur the emotional surges of my memories holding both good and bad times alike. There was so much I regretted having never done when I had the chance, opportunities lost and paths never taken. You never truly realize th the things in your life you take for granted until you find everything you've ever known stripped from you. It really makes you think about what you have now, in the moment. Have you ever, have you truly lived your best life if you find yourself full of so many regrets? Oh, question under, under his breath. Have you ever truly lived your best life if you find yourself full of so many regrets? I asked the question under my breath, exhaling it with a fraction of the worries that like to run rampant in my head. I don't know. I startled from my stupor, not realizing Xavier had heard my pondering. I went to explain myself, but he continued his train of thought instead. It depends a lot on the person, I think. Some prefer to coast by, taking whatever way is easiest for them and allowing the grievances to brush past. And they focus on letting things go on. They focus on letting things go and moving on, almost like they're afraid of conflict in the real world. He sighs before speaking again. <sighs> And then there's others, those in life who want to do more, want to be more, who feel trapped. They struggle and fight to forge a path in life that they want, oftentimes uh, suffering because of it. All they want to do is be themselves, but sometimes they may be blind to their own reality, do not see it for what it truly is. In prison. Almost like those old stories of an heir in a tower, they only know what they're told and live peacefully in said tower as it's the only life they know. 
they foolishly trust the people keeping them there because why wouldn't they? They, w they haven't done any anything to purposefully hurt them, at least that they know of. But cracks form, gra gaps in trust, slowly but surely, that window keeping them in the world separate begins to resemble a spider web. And when the day come comes that, gla that the glass shatters, does everything up until that point count as their best life? Or does their life truly begin from that moment forward? Unlike the air, we don't often have someone to rescue us and change our fate. We have to do that ourselves. And it's not as easy to escape on our own. You may even succeed only to have the world bite you just for trying to be yourself. Jeez, Xavier, you're kind of getting into something, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, I can sense this. <laughs> and what the heck is so wrong with just being you? Who are others to say it's not okay to be who you are just because it's not their own life? That's why it makes everything else so much more difficult. If the world rejects you, why not just run back to the safety net of that false reality you were given? That can only last so long, though. That trust is already broken, and despite how much you try and pretend that it's fixed, despite not having addressed, not even addressing the issue, it all becomes a ticking clock. It counts down minutes you left that you don't even know you have until the rug is ripped out from under you, and you're sent falling into darkness. You're left alone and scared and confused and trying to so desperately to figure out what the heck happened and where it all went wrong. Wondering if this was your fault, if you deserve to be trapped like this. The silence slowly drives you mad as time passes. And all you can do is wait until one day the world becomes loud again. Xavier pauses, taking a moment to wipe the tears from his eyes. We can't know whether we live our best lives, because no matter what, there will always be regrets over our actions. The life we have now is the only one we've got, so we shouldn't focus too hard on the past, despite what pain may lie there. We should focus on bettering our future by improving our present. Xavier was trying his best to keep his face neutral, in an attempt at holding back further tears and averting meeting my gaze. I didn't know much about his past, but it was clear that the speech wasn't just his opinion. He'd been talking about himself. There was so much of Xavier I didn't know, putting in perspective just how little time we'd actually spent together. Whatever traumas he'd faced, the impact of the world at large was causing all the emotions he'd hidden away to bubble up again. I couldn't stand seeing my friend like this, so clearly in pain. I know he wanted to talk, talk it out properly at Haven, but he needed a release right now. Gently, I got up from my seat and stepped toward the, t stepped toward the bat wrapping him in a tight hug as his facade crumbled further. Hey, you are who you are, and that's okay. Everything will be okay. And the dam and the dam burst as the tears began to flow once more, Xavier clutching at me as he sobbed into my chest. Aww. We sat there, holding each other under the starry night as the bat let out all the negativity that had built up inside. Whatever it was whatever it was that his past held, I'd find out in due time. Everything would be answered eventually, but right now, I wasn't the one in need. Xavier was. And what he needed was a friend. The flames had died down significantly over the past few hours as I poked them in an effort to pass the time. Xavier and I had sat quietly there for a while, my arm wrapped around his shoulder as he let himself feel everything he'd pushed down. Eventually, I told him to get some rest while I took a watch. So, while I took a watch, so he could sleep more peacefully, he was reluctant at first, but eventually went along with it after some convincing. It was it was better that at least one of us slept tonight. Sure, I did think the kid needed some time to doze in order to help uh, slough off some emotional weight. Slough off, slough off, slough. At the same time, I was also I was also sure he'd insist on staying up all night with me if he knew what that's what I was doing. After the encounter with the silence earlier, I had tried to brush away the thoughts of it, but in reality, my mind had started racing the more I tried to avoid the topic. I'd come so close to dying yet again, and I'd made another dumb mistake. It was a blessing that did, that thing didn't come after us. We probably would have both been toast otherwise. How would I survive this long if I kept messing up like, screwing up like that? Was I just lucky the whole time? Was I the main character? Or was I... <laughs> no. I needed to stop this train of thought and not wallow in my idiocy any further. There were more pressing concerns at the moment. For example, 
Just because we'd run away doesn't mean it had left the area. The monster could still be lurking somewhere close by. The fire might call attention to other things that lurked in the shadows, but I'd rather take my chance with them. The crackle would provide notice should it draw near. Another point in my favor was the clear sky overhead, the moon particularly bright for whatever reason. It provided much needed light on the world below. The backyard had, had an almost ghostly glow to it from the moonlight, meaning I'd be able to see, any, see should anything disturb us. Speaking of disturbing sights, my mind was brought back to when we fled earlier and I glanced back. Whose blood was that? There was every possibility it was a random stranger, but the thought was still unnerving that someone had been so close and we had no clue. Could we have helped them? I doubted it. We'd never know, I know now anyway, a chance lost to the past. We couldn't have even known whether they were an ally or an enemy. That thought alone unsettled me even more. What if they were from Haven? They'd lost that polar bear earlier to send me a message, and if they'd lost another one so soon, that would affect whatever morale they'd mustered. This all could be discussed further when we arrived. For now, I just have to keep watch. If I get too distracted, who knows what might sneak up on me. Dorian? Like that. I bit my lip to keep from crying out, at least a st releasing a startled and pained grunt instead. For the third, third time today, the bat had startled me. Xavier! I swear I'll put a bell on you if you keep startling me like that. I'm not interested in indulging your fetishes at the moment, old man. I looked up at the bat, happy to see a small smile on his face. That release from earlier must have done its work. <laughs> Are you sure? I promise I don't bite too hard. <laughs> Jeez. I don't have a thing for dentures either. Sorry. <laughs> we let out a small laugh as we, as we talked quietly to each other. That previous lighthearted atmosphere returning with a warm welcome. I slid the pocket watch out and checked it, surprised to see that even if I had intended to wake him up, it was early. What are you doing up anyhow? I've still got at least an hour left on my shift. I, uh, I couldn't actually sleep. I've just been tossing and turning for a while now. You wanted to come and keep me company then? Yeah, it beats sitting alone, doesn't it? Fair enough. I patted the ground next to me as the bat took his seat there. I could take over if you wanted to give it a try. I shook my head in response. I'll pass. I was actually intending to let you sleep the night. You didn't have to do that. I, w I would have been fine taking a watch. I'm sure you would have too, but you needed it more than me. Besides, I have too much on my mind right now, and it seems you do too. You could say that again. I'm sure you would have... I'm sure you would have. Wait, I feel like I was about to say something. I'm sure you would have. Oh, never mind. My bad joke was cut off by a shove from my companion, a smile on his face. Very funny. Very funny. <laughs> what should we do then? We could just talk as we've been doing. I guess. But I think I'd feel better on the move. You said we aren't too far from Haven earlier. We should be close, but it'll be more difficult to traverse with the darkness. Uh, seems like the moonlight will help significantly with that. I took a moment to ponder it. Honestly, I'd rather put more distance between us and the creature than sit here. I stood up, brushing off the dirt from my pants. Well, let's get going then. Hmm. Used to the ritual by now, we quickly, quickly gather our things and, exit, and exited the backyard to the nighttime streets. With the moon so vibrant tonight, it made it easier for us to see where we were where we were going, and not trip as we navigated to the nearest intersection. Having lived in the city, you get used to the ever-present light pollution invading the sky from the buildings below. So when all the light suddenly vanishes, your nights are suddenly a lot darker than you're accustomed to, the shadows vast and ominous. I was a lot more appreciative of the moon ever since, I'd, ever since and I hoped that someone somewhere out there, Marshall was staring up at it with me. I never realized just how littered the sky is with stars. I glanced at the bat, who was gazing upwards with me. Yeah, that's true. I live in the city, too, so I know the feeling when you go out to the more countryside. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely. I looked to the nearby street sign to realize we were closer to our destination than I thought. I picked up the pace slightly as I continued my hushed conversation with Xavier. Hmm. Do you ever wonder what just what might be out there, so far above us? You mean other, other than planets and stars? Yeah, it's possible life exists out there, considering how vast it is. Think we'll ever encounter it? 
And perhaps one day, if we haven't already. Oh, please, don't tell me you're one of those aliens walk among us types. Among us. And of course not. But there are plenty of probes that have been sent into deep space. We could have made contact without realizing if one of them was faulty. Now, for the sake of your entertainment, sure. Maybe a wolf will fly down from space and take me to be his husband. He might be on his way for you now, right now. Luckily for me, I have my own earthen wolf to keep me grounded. He continued to trek forward in a comfortable silence, me softly humming a song I used to frequently listen to while Xavier hummed his own tune. The noise would be a simple yet effective way to tell if the silence neared again now, now, now that the conversation was absent. In the distance, the vague outline of our destination rested on the horizon above the houses. I tapped Xavier on the shoulder and pointed in its direction. There it is. You know, you never told me where exactly Haven is. See for yourself. Are we finally here? During the street corner, at the end of the block, stood two massive wrought iron gates with stone walls lining either side. Beyond them were large structures of various sizes and, pushing them farther back, an expanse of grass with pavement interwoven amongst it. All this could, all this could only be seen as mostly silhouettes for the moment, meaning from here Xavier couldn't read the sign that labeled the place. A nagging feeling began to tug at my stomach as we advanced and the location came into proper view, into view proper, allowing Xavier to piece things together. Haven is a university campus? Huh, brilliant, right? Dorms to store the survivors, a mess hall for meals, auditoriums for meetings or to teach their surviving young. The wall surrounding it is perfect to keep us safe. Plus, it's full of textbooks to teach future generations. Your, most co co uh, your Morse code book can find a place amongst their ranks. Huh, wow. Points to them. Thank you. Wait, what? Who said you got any? You just did. I helped you. I helped found Haven. Remember? Uh, did you suggest the campus? No, Raya did. But points to Raya then, not you. Who is Raya? Uh, another co-founder. She and her wife basically run the place. We'd drawn appropriately close to it so that the sign out front finally became clear enough to to read. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad to hear that the the leader of Haven is a girl because I, I there's another animatic that I kind of want to make, and it was contingent on how the leadership and ranking in uh, Haven worked. So so far this might be pretty good. We drawn appropriately close so that the sign out front finally became clear enough to read. Hmm. Gall Haven University. Oh, so that's where the name came from. That was the point of inspiration for it. Yeah. I stopped suddenly, my mind finally putting together what was wrong. Noticing this, Xavier turned. Dorian, what's wrong? There's no light. Oh, shoot. Oh, don't tell me. As I stared into the campus, I saw there wasn't a single light, light source to be found. Well, it's pretty late. Are you sure they aren't just asleep? I'm sure. Since we started taking refuge here, they had always at least two guards by the front with torches. There's a single reason as to why they'd break their protocol like this. Haven is in lockdown. And that seems like a nice little cliffhanger to end on. <laughs> Oh man, I, I figured there would be something amiss with Haven, you know, in stories like this, the place that you think is usually a safe haven usually ends up not being so... Oh boy. So we're going to have to see what's going up with Haven now that we're finally here, but we'll have to uh, continue with that next time. Uh, thanks you guys for tuning in, hope you guys had a good day, good evening, good night, whatever time it is for you, and uh, yeah. Feel free to follow me on the social medias and such. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed my narrations. And stay tuned for other stories in the future. Alright, hope you guys take care until next time. Bye now.